Hi and welcome to this tutorial of how to update your website. This website was for Chamber Music Wilmington and we really enjoyed having you guys as a client. Um, we had a lot of fun building this website and it's got a lot of really cool features that we enjoyed making. Um, the great thing is we built this website on the Weebly platform so it's a great user-friendly platform to be able to go in really easily and, and make changes on the website. It's also set up so that your viewers, whether they're looking at it mobily, um, if they're looking on it a tablet, it doesn't really matter. It has a responsive design to it that's going to adapt to that screen. So let's go ahead and dive right in and we're going to show you guys how to make some updates. You're going to open up your web browser and we suggest that you use Google Chrome. Um, it seems to be a little better um, than Internet Explorer or, or Firefox or any of the other programs, at least when you're making updates on the site. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to actually type in chambermusicwilmington.org forward slash login. Okay, and once you do that, it's going to bring up this page. Uh, you'll see it says loggerhead designs up above and it just has a simple login. So what we're going to do is we're going to type in chambermusicwilmington at gmail.com and your temporary password is music123 with a capital M. Okay, and once we get logged in, you're going to see a screen that looks similar to this. It may actually put you on the account screen, which will look just very plain. And this obviously is a place where you can go in and you can make updates to whoever the username is and also change your password if you want it to be different than the music123. Uh, this is also a great screen because it's got all my contact information. So if you guys get stuck at any point, feel free to give us a call or you can shoot us an email and we'll you know get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, so if I want to dive into the website, I'm going to click on the My Site tab and, and let's go back over. It shows some stats of um, the website, not nearly as in-depth as Google Analytics, but it still get, gives you kind of a summary of how many page views you had and also unique visitors. It'll actually show you, say on February 25th, you had 74 unique visitors uh, look at the website itself. Okay, this is also kind of a good area that if you if you want to have a quick reference to check out comments if you had a blog or even your form entries, which although you receive these as an email, this is kind of a good place that it stores all of them in case the, the email was deleted. Okay, so if we want to make updates to the website, you'll see that you've got your website listed here, and you just go over to this orange button and click on Edit Site. Now I'll take it just a moment for it to populate all the information. But once it uploads, you'll notice that it looks exactly like your regular website. The only difference is now you have all these tool options that are over here on the left-hand side. Uh, how Weebly is set up is almost like you're playing a game of Tetris or if you are doing a puzzle. All of the different elements that you put on here are little puzzle pieces that you're going to click and drag from this left-hand side over into the screen. Okay? <clears throat> now this is your home page and we're going to skip um, and I'll go back over how to update this main banner uh, later in the video. For now I want to go ahead and scroll down and, and show you how to use all of these little options on the left hand side. Now how this website was set up, um, there's a lot of features that you'll be able to update yourself but there are a few things that you'll have to contact Loggerhead Designs in order to make those updates. Uh, because this website was set up as technically a one-page scrolling website, which you'll notice when you look, and we'll go back to, I'm going to go to this other tab and go to the regular website just to show you what I'm talking about. You'll notice when we click on Concert Season, it automatically scrolls down to that section on the page. Obviously, About is technically set up on a separate page, which we'll go over in a moment. Support, it scrolls down to the Support section. Same thing with Contact, it all scrolls down. Get Tickets is simply just a quick link that goes over to the event page where you guys are selling all of your tickets. Okay, so let's go back over to the website. And we'll dive into how to update all the other pages that are listed under the About section 
here in just a moment. For now, let's go ahead and let's scroll down to the concert season se section. Now you'll notice that as I'm mousing over, you know, my little cursor is going over all of these sections, you notice this blue bar that appears around each of the elements. The reason for that is it's indicating, hey, this is an element that you have dumped in here. This is technically a photo element, this is a spacer, and these are all just um, regular text field areas, and this is also a photo. But we're going to go over that in just a second when I scroll down. We'll scroll down underneath all of these, and let's say if we wanted to add a uh, fourth, fifth concert, okay? What I would want to do is I want to put a spacer. That way there's a little bit of space between this section and the next. So what I'll go over here for is literally the spacer box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to left click on that and you'll see it's highlighted blue and over on the right hand side it basically it's indicating these little highlighted areas are the only areas that I can dump this element. You'll notice that there's a blue line going all the way across the page. If I want to drag this up a little bit, if I try to put this element in between these two YouTube boxes, you can see there's a blue bar indicated underneath. If I want to put the spacer on top, it's going to do it all the way across. If I want to go to the left side of this text box, to the right side, once I dump that element in, which we're going to put it on the bottom, I'll release my mouse. It automatically updates, and you can see that spacer is now in there. And when I scroll down on the little blue, I can sit there and, and maximize or minimize my spacer. Okay? All right, next we're, what we're going to do, so that we can do the same format as these that are up here, we're going to go ahead and click and drag an image. So we'll click on image, drag it over, and dump it underneath our spacer. We'll let go of it, and it's going to automatically say upload image. And just very much like Facebook or using an email, it's very simple to, to add all of these photo elements on there. You're going to click on it upload photo from your computer and it's going to open up the chamber music Wilmington folder that I've created and let's say that we wanted to you know just dump in one of these random images we'll hit open and it's automatically going to update the file and store it within your files and it takes it just a moment depending on the size of the photo and it's going to dump it right in there now you can see that our photo is pretty large there's a couple things we can do to edit the size of it, but for now we're going to ignore that because what we're actually going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on Spacer again. But we're going to put it on the right hand side this time. Now you'll notice as soon as I dump it in there, the page automatically formatted the Spacer and the photo to be equally the same width. Now we're going to dump this text field over and we'll dump it on the right hand side and let go of it. Okay. Obviously we don't want that much space in between because if we use the one up above for reference, it's actually a pretty small spacer size. Okay. So we'll go ahead and click and drag. And what we do is we come over to the bar that's in between these elements. You hold down your shift key and then left click on it and drag it over and it's automatically going to format that size. Okay. And then we just let go of it. Now with photos, we'll go ahead and we'll go over photos and then we'll go through each section of some of the, the other options on here. Because the interesting thing with all of these elements that are on the left hand side, once you click and drag and dump them over, all of them have even more advanced editing options that are available. All I have to do to, um, you know, to go into those options is I scroll over the, the photo here, I'm going to left click on it, and it's going to pop up with those options. I can edit the image, which will allow me to resize it, reshape it. Um, we can replace the image. Lightbox, I'm going to turn Lightbox on because what Lightbox is, is if, you know, in the live website, if I was to click on this photo, it would make it a full screen image. If you don't want that option available, you just don't turn on the Lightbox. Now we'll go over it in a minute whenever we upload um, the ticket image but you can actually make photographs a link okay you can also and we'll go over that in a moment 
Um, you can change the alignment. You can change the spacing that is above, below, to the left, to the right of that photo. You can also edit the caption that would be underneath the photo. And in advanced, that's where you can add borders. You can um, put in your SEO text for that photograph, some other elements that we'll go over in the future as well. Spacer is pretty self-explanatory, and we've already gone over how to make the updates on it. But let's say that we're ready to type in our information. Now we can actually take information off of a Word document. We can copy and paste it um, directly off of a website, however you want to do that. For now, what we'll do is we'll scroll over, and we're just going to copy the text that was in this one. So I'm going to click inside of it, and I'm going to scroll over and go ahead and do a copy. And again, you can do this from a Word document, or if you want to just type in automatically, you can do that as well. But just for visual purposes, I'm going to paste that information in there. Now, the cool thing is when you can actually do all of your editing and everything within the page itself. You don't have to do it in Word. You'll notice that when I click in here, this menu pops up, and you have bold, italicize, underline. You can highlight text and increase and decrease the size. You can change the color of it by preset, or you can customize your color. Uh, you can also create links, which we'll go over in a moment. Change your alignment, make bolded or numbered list. Or let's say that when you copied and, and put all of the text in here, it didn't match up with the, the regular text that's within the website. It just, for whatever reason, it, it's just not matching up visually. What you can do is you can actually highlight all of it and you can click on remove formatting and now you'll notice it's gone back to just simple text. No coloring, no anything on it. Okay. All right. So when I want to create a link, and we'll go over it with the photo as well in a moment, but let's say that when I typed in um, a new web address for the next you know concert that you're going to have. We'll just say Google for now, just as an example. Right now it's just text. I can't click on it. I can't do anything with it. But what I can do to create a link is I just highlight it, click on the little link button to create a link, and it's going to give me the option to either point you to, and you can kind of ignore these down here, but it's going to either point you to another page within the website, or let's say if we wanted to take it, take them to the ticket page. What we would want to do is, you know, we'll type in the address. For now, we'll, again, just use Google as the example. And you would want to make sure to click on Open Link in a new window and then hit Save. So now, uh, whenever I'm viewing this website, if I would click on that, it's going to take me directly to Google and open it up in a separate tab. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back in. And what I'll show you is if you wanted to make it a link and point it to one of the pages that's on the website. Okay, What you would do is you would just click on Standard Page, and from the drop-down you can select Mission, History, Community, Supporters, any of the pages that's been created. Okay. Alright, so let's go back over, and you notice uh, up here on this other concert we actually have a little Tickets button. I'm going to send this as well as uh, some of the other graphic elements to you, and you'll have them for your, you know, you know, for graphic purposes to be able to make those updates. So for now, what we're going to do is we're going to go back over to Image, drag it over, and we want to dump it right underneath our text box. And we're going to upload Image, upload a photo from the computer, and Get Tickets button. All right, and again, you can see it's really large, so if we wanted to resize it, make it smaller, you could either click on it and hit Edit Image, or you'll notice down here that there's actually a little blue box that appears. You can click on that and resize it. And then we want to change our alignment over to the left, which we'll do that first and then resize it. Okay, so if I want to make this quick Get Tickets actually a link button that's going to open up, one of the other places, you're going to do the exact same thing that you did with the text. You click on it, you're going to go down to link, and then there you can either point it to somewhere within your web page or to a new URL. Okay? 
It's that simple. All right. So if we wanted to delete any of these elements, let's say, you know, we're just getting rid of all the information that's on there. It's as simple as going up to X, clicking on X, delete, and it's going to automatically reformat the page once I delete it. And you can see that uh, it removed it, automatically pushed everything over to the left. And again, if I want to resize it, just hold down shift, drag it back and forth. Okay. So let's say that if I wanted to move this element, I like what I did. I just need to move it underneath get tickets. All you have to do is go up here to the box and the, the little four way arrow will appear. Left click on it. And then it's going to indicate that you can drop it down, move it around anywhere that you want it to go. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and delete these elements. I'm going to leave the spacer just to give us a little bit of space between the other elements. Okay, and you can play around with all these other other elements. Best thing to do is to kind of dive in, uh, check them all out, play around with them, and get used to using it. And I guarantee it's only going to take you about 10, 15 minutes to really to you know get the idea of how to use this site. All right, so with gallery. Uh, you can click and drag a gallery over, and it's basically going to set it up like a photo album. I would upload images. I'm going to click on and go back basically exactly how we did before. I'm just going to select a couple of random images here. Hit open, and it'll take it just a few minutes, depending on you know how many photos that you are dumping in this gallery. Uh, take it just a moment for it to format, and it's going to start uploading all those images in there. Okay, now for some reason this one image was appearing small, but that's okay. We're going to ignore it. What we can do is if we want to have columns of three photos, you can click on here and go to the advanced options. You can have three, you can go up to four, you can go down to two, as many as you want. Now this photo is probably not appearing because it was the wrong format. It needs to be a JPEG, PNG, just a regular image file. Now you can edit the captions. So you can put captions on each of these photos, spacing, and go to advance the same way as it did before. Now also, when you click inside the box, I can actually click on each of these individual photos to create it as a link, to add a caption, or to delete a particular photo and get it out of there. Okay? So that's a gallery. A slideshow is much, pretty much the exact same thing, except it gives us the option to be able to slide through the elements. And we're going to go over that in a moment because that's what we have on the home page. The uh, map is actually, you know, if you wanted to add a map that showed the location of one of these events, you can click on map, drag it over, and dump. And it's going to format based on the width of the page. But you'll click in there change the address for where you want it to go and you can zoom in it'll give you the option to zoom in close to zoom out whatever you want to do and you can play around with all these options we really don't have to go in depth with them but advanced display is if you want to add you know show a scale yes it'll add the scale to it if you want to have a map map overview or a map control that's a little bit larger you can add the big pan you can see now the bigger pans on there same thing if we want to uh, show an overview, we can click the overview on and you can see it, it shows a, a bigger overview of San Francisco. All right, we'll delete that one. And I'm kind of going over this quickly. Obviously, since it's a video, you can just pause and rewind, whatever you need to do if, if I'm going a little too fast. Okay, newsletter form, we'll go over that in a second with the contact area. The button you've got a couple predefined buttons and these are basically exactly what it says. It's a button that you can add text to and it can be a quick link to somewhere within the page much like you did with a photograph. So you click within the the button element change the button text and let's say that we wanted it to say um, you know get tickets for some reason. Okay we would click back on the option Button style, we could keep it either the the reddish pink color, we could change it to the blue color, make it a larger. And again, you can play around with these. You can create it as a link so that it takes you within the page. 
or outside of the page, whatever you want to do with it. Okay, we'll delete that one. Now the, um, the, the embed code section, you really don't have to worry about that. We do have an embed code down here that is for the support section. Now, if you need to make any updates or changes to this, this drop-down list, that is one thing that you're going to have to contact us for and just request a change to it, simply because it's all in code, which if I can click on this, I can show that to you. If I quick, there we go. You can see it's all in a lot of um, pretty complicated code because it's an accordion effect element. So, you know, we would want to go in and make those changes for you just so that you know the element works okay alright and again simple this is a text field you can make changes to by clicking inside of it donate button you can click on there and change down here all of these logos are PNGs with a transparent background so you can upload these just as a photo just by you know clicking and dragging image over and I know that you're not going to have any trouble with that with your graphic background um, you can just dump in a PNG, remove the background off of one of your sponsors, and uh, dump it right in there as a photograph, and then make it a quick link, which we've done for you know all of your sponsors. All of these um, graphic banners that go across are actually you know they're just photoshopped banners, and I'll send that file to you as well as the main header banner, which we'll go over in a moment. Okay, the contact form. Um, if you need to make any updates or changes on here, uh, all you would do, you know, let's say if you wanted a new contact, you would come over and you would click on contact form, click and drag it and dump it over, which is what this is. If I want to change the options that are within the form, all I have to do is click on it. And you'll notice over here on the right hand side, all of the elements actually changed and they're set up specifically for a contact form. You got a short text box, which is what this email section is. Large text box, which is what the comment section is. And you can play around with it if you want to have a file upload, so you'll allow people to, you know, upload images to you. You can click and drag that in there. Um, and then it has some predefined ones. Like right now, you've got phone number, email, and name in there. If you wanted to add address, you could click on address, drag it over, dump it in and it automatically has an address field in there so that people can you know put in all their information so let's say that if we want to you know make something mandatory or not mandatory let's say you don't for some reason you they really don't need to leave a comment uh, you can see there's a little asterisk next to it so when I click on it I can change what the the text field says and if I want to make it so it's not technically required I can click off and it's not a required element anymore. Okay? And again, you can add instructions so that when they scroll over it pops up instructions. You can change the width height, the spacing, all that, which you can dive in and kind of figure out on your own. If we want to, you know, change any of these options that are down here, I'll click inside of this interest field, and all this is is actually a check boxes element, which check boxes is over here on the left. You can do option buttons, check boxes, or a drop down list, whatever, you know, whatever format you want. So if I want to change the form options as well, which are a little bit, you know, like your confirmation and where the email is actually going to go, you would type in your email address up here, and you can actually have a confirmation message. Right now we've got a message on there. Thank you, your information has been submitted, but you can type in here and put in your own you know, more interactive message. Or if you want to have it so that when they hit send, it sends them back to the top of the page or something, you can actually create it as a link. Okay? And then once you're done, you just hit save. All right. So the next option, we're going to scroll all the way up to the top to where this gr the main graphic banner is, okay? Now, with the main graphic banner, this is just a slideshow element. You know, all we did was just, you know, click and drag slideshow over, but it does have a specific file size. That way it's, it's going to format correctly and fit the screen, okay? And uh, I'm going to send that graphic to you so you can use it as a template. So for now, what we're going to do to, let's say we want to delete 
you know, this element simply because it's no longer February 28th. We're going to click on the box, and here we can change the speed to 7 seconds, 8 seconds, whatever you want it to be, the transition of it. Uh, you can add spacing, which, you know, really we don't have to worry about on here. You can actually change the transition style. So if you don't want it to fade, you want it to do a mosaic, slice, fold, you can play around with those as well. Okay, so what we're going to do is click on Add Edit Photos, and it's going to pop up with all of the images, and we can add more just by clicking Add Photos, and you can add more of the slides. If we want to rearrange these, you click on them and just rearrange them. And that works the same way in the gallery function as well. You can rearrange all your photos simply by clicking on them and dragging them. Now these are all, they have quick links in them. You can add a caption if you want, but this was actually a quick link to the Eventbrite website. And uh, that way if they clicked on it, it took them directly to the ticket page. Okay, But we're going to go ahead and delete this one since we no longer need it. We're going to hit Save. And now it's not going to slide through anything because we only have one photo on there. But as you add photos, all you have to do is click on it, add edit photos, and add a photo, okay? So I'm going to send the graphic file to you in a Photoshop file, but it's going to look similar to this. And you can see that uh, we've already kind of laid this out as a template for you. Uh, basically, you don't want to put anything above this line simply because the menu bar goes across and whether it's mobile or a tablet, uh, we want to keep a little bit of space on there so that we don't have to worry about, you know, your information and your date being covered up. Okay? So you can explore this graphic once I send it to you. You'll want to, you know, flatten the image and save it either, either as a JPEG or a PNG and make sure you keep it as an RGB. That way it's going to, you know, translate the color correctly. Okay? And uh, we'll go back over to the website. Obviously, you already know, um, you know how to, to upload the new images on here. Now, something that we need to kind of cover, you know, we had said that there's a couple little options that, unfortunately, you guys will have to contact us to make the updates simply because of the formatting of the website. So if you want to add any pages, you'll definitely want to contact us, and we'll add the pages for you. Um, and that way we can, we can also, you know, correctly put in the menu items simply because this website was set up a little bit differently than a traditional website since it's a one pager. But let's say that we want to make updates to everything that was in the About Us section. I'll click over here for a reference. When we click on About, obviously the menu options change. We've got Concert Season, uh, About History in the Community, and Supporters. Okay, so again this is an area that we would have to update but in order to access each of these pages, we'll go back over to the website. You're going to click on, on the top. You'll see this blue bar going across. And you've got Build, Pages, Store, and Settings. We don't have a store yet, so you can kind of ignore that element. We'll go over that in the future if that's something we add. But for now, we're going to go under Pages. And you can see that we have Mission, which is technically the About page. Uh, history, History Highlights, Community, and Supporters. So when we click on Mission, it's going to pop up with the page. And you can see that um, all of your information that is on the website is already popped in here. And all we have to do to make the updates to it is simply click in here, uh, text, you know, into the text field and type in the same way we did before. Now, you know, since you're still on technically on the Page tab, what you'd want to do is click back over to build and it's going to pop up all these options again for you so that you can make these updates and changes. Okay, So um, if we want to go to any of these other pages what we would do is just go back up to pages and we're going to click back and go to history and we can type in all the history information. This is just a text link that takes you to We'll go back to the history highlights. So if you want to update that um, highlight list that you know that was created, you just click in here and then you can type back. Same thing for community. We'll click on community. And uh, let's say you know you want to make some updates to this one. You want to make the photo a little bit larger. You can highlight over, click on it, drag it, and make it a larger image.
and you can obviously you know do all the the changes to it just as we went over earlier okay so we'll go back and then you also have the supporters page which this simply just has a photo element on top text on the bottom and then two buttons included okay and that's honestly about it there's not a whole lot of other re re really complicated information that we have to go over if I could talk today but um, if we go back I want to go back to the home page real quick and show you a couple things on there one thing that uh, I'd forgotten to go over was actually the YouTube videos which you can probably figure that out on your own but over here on the left you'll see it has a YouTube box so if you want to dump in any of these YouTube elements all you have to do is click on YouTube drag it over dump it right in there and it's again going to format based on the width of the box itself and what you have in there you click on it and dump in your YouTube URL right there and it's that simple now the next little thing is if you wanted to either allow a PDF that people could download, a Word document, whatever the case is. The only other element is document. Click on document, you can dump it right in the page. And this actually allows you to be able to view the document. Um, so if we wanted to upload a file, let's say it was a Excel spreadsheet and you wanted people to be able to sit there and view it and, scr and scroll through, um, you could upload it that way. Or, we'll delete that. Or if you just want to have it so that they can download a file for some reason, uh, then you can actually put on here just file. Dump in file. It's going to ask you for the file name. You just upload a file, and it works the same way as the, the photos did. And let's say that we wanted to put in, yeah, we'll put in our, our invoice. How's that? We would hit open. And you can see now that it, the file name will change, and that makes it so that people can actually download that file. Okay? Okay, so um, that's about it for all of the options. Uh, let's say that, you know, I've been working on this all weekend, making updates, but my power went out. Well, you don't have to worry about it if you were in the middle of typing something and you had to leave. None of those changes and updates that you've done are actually going to appear on the website until you hit the publish button. So you can sit here and you can work within the website as long as you want to. And then when you're finished, you got to make sure in order for your options to or for your updates to, to actually pop up is you need to hit the publish button and that's going to take just a moment for it to populate and then you can follow the link and check out all of your changes and make sure that everything looks good on the website okay and that's about it uh, hopefully I didn't ramble too much and I was able to explain everything to you uh, we really enjoyed working on this website with you guys we had a lot of fun with it had a lot of positive feedback, and I think it's a beautiful website. I think it really uh, speaks volumes for chamber music and, and really puts you guys up on par. Now, if you guys, uh, you know, if you have any questions or anything, or if I ramble too much, you know, feel free to, you know, use the video for your reference. You can pause, rewind, or if you get stuck and have a question that I didn't really answer, feel free to call us. You can call us at 910 five four one zero one four three or you can shoot us an email at support at loggerheaddesigns.net or you can email me directly at patrick at loggerheaddesigns.com either one is fine but thanks again for being our client and i just want to thank you and uh, good luck with your website